Parthenogenesis is a form of asexual reproduction where an embryo develops from an unfertilized egg cell. The word comes from the Greek parthenos meaning virgin and genesis meaning origin. It occurs naturally in many animals but not in humans. Human reproduction normally requires a sperm and egg, each providing 23 chromosomes to make a full set of 46 in the zygote. In parthenogenesis, only the egg contributes DNA. In humans, this results in developmental failure due to a process called genomic imprinting. Some genes in the embryo are only active if they come from the mother and others only from the father. If all DNA is maternal, the embryo lacks essential paternal gene activity, causing it to fail. Scientists have experimentally triggered human egg cells to divide without fertilization using chemical stimulation and electric shocks. These eggs form parthenotes, early stage embryos that divide for a few days. However, they never develop into a fetus. They are useful for stem cell research, not reproduction. So, in a lot of animal species, parthenogenesis is actually a natural way to reproduce. For example, in bees, ants, and wasps, unfertilized eggs develop into males, which are haploid, while fertilized eggs become females. Whiptail lizards and Komodo dragons are pretty fascinating too because their all-female populations can reproduce entirely without males. Sharks have shown rare cases of parthenogenesis, usually when they're in captivity. And with birds, well, sometimes unfertilized eggs will start to develop, but the embryos almost never survive. These species don't rely on genomic imprinting, which means they can actually develop viable offspring from just one parent's DNA. Okay, so human cloning is actually not the same thing as parthenogenesis. So what is cloning anyway? Cloning creates a genetically identical copy of an organism using a process called somatic cell nuclear transfer, or SCNT. First, a body cell is taken from a person. Then its DNA is inserted into a donor egg that has had its nucleus removed. After that, the egg is stimulated so it starts to divide and develop into an embryo. This exact technique, by the way, was used to produce Dolly the sheep back in 1996. You might be wondering, why isn't human cloning actually done? Well, there's an extremely high failure rate and many attempts result in birth defects and abnormalities. There are also ethical and legal bans in place pretty much worldwide. On top of that, there are big concerns about things like identity, consent, and the potential for misuse. Currently, cloning is really just limited to therapeutic uses such as creating embryos for stem cell harvesting. Now let's talk about gene editing, specifically CRISPR-Cas9. So, what is CRISPR? Well, CRISPR-Cas9 is a really powerful genetic tool that's used to cut DNA at specific locations. It can add, delete, or even correct genes. Basically, it uses a guide RNA to direct the Cas9 enzyme to the target gene. CRISPR has a bunch of uses, actually. It's being used to treat genetic diseases like sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis, and even certain cancers. It's also helping with eye diseases, such as Leber's congenital amaurosis. And of course, it's a pretty big deal in research into developmental biology. Now, let's talk about the controversy around CRISPR babies. In 2018, a Chinese scientist edited the genomes of twin embryos to make them resistant to HIV. These embryos were implanted and born. This was condemned for several reasons, lack of safety, ethical violations, uninformed consent, and honestly, long-term unknown risks. Mitochondria in inheritance and disease. What are mitochondria? Well, mitochondria are the energy producers of cells and, interestingly, they contain their own DNA, which we call mtDNA. Unlike nuclear DNA, mtDNA is inherited only from the mother, and, you know, mutations in mtDNA can cause some pretty serious diseases like Lee syndrome or Melis. The so-called three-parent baby technique is, uh, designed to prevent mitochondrial diseases. Here's how it works. First, you take the mother's egg, which has faulty mitochondria, and remove its nucleus. 
Then, you insert this nucleus into a donor egg that has healthy mitochondria. Finally, you fertilize the reconstructed egg with the father's sperm. The result is a baby with nuclear DNA from two parents, but mitochondria from a third. This technique has been approved in countries like the United Kingdom, but only under strict oversight. All of these advanced reproductive technologies, well, they raise some really complex ethical questions. Let's break down a few of the main issues. When it comes to human cloning, there are concerns around identity, individuality, consent, and honestly, the potential for misuse. Gene editing brings up worries about designer babies, social inequality, and effects we just can't predict yet. Parthenogenesis raises questions about human identity and developmental risks. With stem cell use, people debate when life actually begins, and there's the destruction of embryos to consider. And for three-parent babies, the legal and parental definitions aren't always clear, and yeah, there are still unknowns about long-term health. Around the world, most countries only allow gene editing for medical research purposes. Human cloning for reproduction is banned, and research on embryos as well as in vitro fertilization technologies is heavily regulated. Alright, to wrap things up, let's go over the core concepts. Parthenogenesis is a form of asexual reproduction that doesn't need sperm. While it occurs naturally in some animals, it's not viable in humans because of genomic imprinting. Human cloning involves making a genetic copy using somatic cell nuclear transfer, but it's not practiced due to high risks and ethical bans. Gene editing, like CRISPR, allows us to make precise changes to DNA, which is promising for treating diseases, but it's definitely controversial when applied to embryos. Mitochondrial inheritance means mitochondrial DNA is passed down from the mother, and using donor mitochondria can help prevent inherited diseases. And of course, ethics are central to all these technologies. Issues like consent, identity, safety, and social impact really can't be overlooked.